Right, what have we got today? Well, it's a smaller one today, but it's by a company who I have never come across yet. I did hear, them, I, now I, I do apologize, I don't remember your name, but one of the subscribers on one of the videos did mention Mech Army, and I thought, you know what, I've never heard of them. So I had a look and I was able to get a hold of a Mech Army item. This is the X4S. There's a load. There's, there's a load of them in the X series, and the X series are a very similar form factor. They're very small keychain lights. This is a keychain light. So this is the X4S, and it's a USB rechargeable one. Um, this one is running on the. A lot of the stuff's covered here by this silly label. Um, this is the black one, and it's running the Cree XP-G2, which a lot of the smaller ones do. Most of the sort of smaller lights, they all sort of rely on the um, the Cree XP-G2, which is it's it's a good workhorse for smaller lights. It's it's perfectly acceptable in its output. So this one uses the tiny 10180 battery. Now, as you know, I'm a big fan of this little Claris Mini one. I mean, the only downside of it was. Because of the battery capacity, they rated it something like 20 minutes. I don't think that's enough for a keychain light, but never mind, that's on max. So there's the tiny little, look at the size of that, 10180, even though that's still 3.7 volts because it is a lithium ion. So rechargeable, rechargeable lithium ion, a tiny little battery there, look at the size of that. Um, so the run time's poor, but the big benefit is, yes, you're getting poor run times, but size. So, I mean, look at the size of that absolutely tiny and obviously this aims to do something very similar so let's get in the box and let's see what we've got here and we'll talk a little bit about it and how it works and all of that good stuff so let's just see right so everything's out the box so drop kick that into the bin pull pull that out don't need that bit of plastic right so what have we got here well nice to see this is the split link so as you can see it is uh, coiled around there and you can get your little you can get your fingernail in like that and you can split that to add it to um, whatever it is you want to connect it to and then obviously you'd need to put the end through this section now i must say i like how big this is yes it increases length but only minimally and i prefer a big open system like that where you can put lanyards through or and just your, your options for attachment are much better i mean ones like this on the Astrolux, they're a little bit more fiddly and more annoying to use. You could also say the, the same thing about the Claris Low, they have made it double width, so okay, fair enough. So I like the fact that they've made that slightly open, it makes it more uh, of a utility piece, I like that. So that's what the split link's for. And then there's two spare O-rings, O-rings just go between two machined threaded parts and you know, at this level of accuracy on machining, you're not gonna get a perfectly watertight um, piece so you need those o-rings to ensure waterproofing and this one is an ipx8 so i'm not going to whinge about waterproofing but i will go through that so nice to see you get spares two of them is about standard from man chinese manufacturers and this is a chinese manufacturer got your split link there that's all you need and there's your little cable there so that is your micro usb now i do have a spare micro usb around here which i in, in white which i will use to check that it charges so nice to see you get the cable it's not a particularly long one but it's decent it feels decent quality so chuck that one side there's the manual now in true trail check style i will read it Brrr, there, done no just joking i will let you have a little look there if you want to pause the video and study that all night long using a candle like we willy winky be my guest but i'm certainly not going to do that so throw that away and i'll just make it up as i go along so let's get rid of this i don't need daft things hanging off so let's get rid of that caution please remove protective sheet at the end of battery right so i presume there is an insulating pad on the end of the battery um, so in shipping it doesn't activate because this is a rotary reaction so you use the rotary reaction like this to um, complete the circuit and get it to function so there's no buttons on this there's no tail clicker there's no side clicker or anything like that so let's open this up now bear in mind you, you can open the top or the bottom but it doesn't fully open so i'll show you what i mean so you open that section but it doesn't fall off now i like that that's a feature which i really like on the claris so you open the top up and it doesn't fall off 
more manufacturers should do that you don't need to be getting into that section anyway you're not going to mod something like this um, and it just means that the usb rechargeable bit is behind something which is threaded and o-ringed which retains waterproofing absolutely fantastic that's why this is an ipx8 meaning if you drop that in water obviously when that's threaded right up if you drop that in water up to two meters above it doesn't have any effect um, it should retain its functionality and it won't break now that is a much better option than something like I mean I get a little bit annoyed and I know I keep going on about with these daft little flaps look the lo you lose waterproofing I mean you can just take it off with your fingernail poor that's not waterproof you're not going to get an IPX8 on a model which has a silly flap like that so I prefer this sort of method. So anyway, we'll open that up and there is your micro USB. So let's just see if it works. So I do have this cable here. So flat to the bottom. So let's plug that in. There you go. And there's your light to show you that it's charging. So nice to see. I mean, that goes straight in there. Now, what are those little dots there? Now it's got numbers on there, which says something like 50%, 100%. I wonder if that's relating to um, battery level or something okay interesting to see so that's it how you charge it and there's obviously a tiny little led um i mean there's not a lot of thread in there but it's, if they say this is ipx8 who might argue so let's put that on now looking at it I, I like it it's not a lot bigger in fact it might be about about the do you know what I would say if they hadn't have put that larger end on, that would have been ne nearly smaller than the Claris, even though this Claris is using a TIR lens and they class this as a smooth reflector, although it looks to me, not that I'm calling them liars, but it looks like a smooth reflector with, with a slight TIR on it. Although, okay, that, that looks fair enough. That does look a uh, smooth reflector. I'll just quickly go over what that means. So if I can find my special pad, there it is, but I will be quick on this. Generally, um, you have your circuit board and your LED and light is fired out willy-nilly into the world. It does it as it wishes. Here's an example of that. It just comes out and flies out because obviously you've got your LED there and over the top you have this plastic dome and light just goes all over the shop. So sometimes you want a modicum of um, control over that. So one method for that is if you imagine there's your LED and we'll look at a cross section. This is an open, empty space. You can have what's called a smooth reflector. So an example of that would be like on this large one, you can see the LED in the middle there, right down the bottom, and then you've got this large smooth reflector. So it's a smooth surface, um, generally silvered like that uh, and, and mirrored. And what it does is it directs light. So the light comes out like that and hits the wall. That's your spill. So we'll turn that on. So you've got your spill. So this section is the spill. This is like the white of a fried egg. Think of it like that. And then you have your spot in the middle. You see the spot there? So the spot is the light that's bounced and maneuvered and reflected by this reflector here. So there's your spot. Now the whole purpose of that is to try and get it to go a distance. So this, uh, the, the whole purpose of this is you want this to throw. These are sometimes referred to as throwers. Now that's all very well, but as you can see with a thrower up close, it's useless. It's just obs completely obscure in detail. And it's not, in my personal humble opinion, not best suited for up close stuff. Yes, you can get around that by bringing this back, bringing it back, bringing it back. And then the problem is less, or you can obviously reduce the output slightly. So we'll just turn that down pop it down there and it's not such an issue but that issue still does exist so your, your other option is to slightly bump that up a bit so you've got your led there now you can have the same reflector over but if you have little bumps in it bumps and aberrations you can use what's called an orange peel reflector so an example of an orange peel reflector would be on this jet beam this is the jet 2 mk which is I really like. I like this. Um, it's a hard working uh, device, and you can see that in there the reflector is bumped. It's certainly not smooth, is it? It has its own little pattern and dips and bumps and things like that. So with an orange peel reflector, what happens is it's similar. You're getting a bit of throw, but as you can see, it's obscuring detail less. You see that? It's not such a pronounced problem. Now I have got that quite close as well so it would show up um, so, and you're getting more of a transition so instead of getting like this fried egg effect it's almost like this it's it, it's transitioned you're getting less of a marked um, zones 
like that. So what it means is it doesn't throw as far, but you get it's better at medium range. It doesn't obscure detail as much. And the far end, of, again, if you want to work up even closer, is to use something like a TIR. Here's a TIR. So there is, there is no reflector. It's just a solid piece of plastic. Now, it's excellent up front. See? It's all transition. There is no obscuring of detail. It's fantastic, even in its full set and they're very close to the paper. Um, I prefer TIRs for up close work. I think that they're a beautiful engineering um, solution to up close light. So you've got your LED and then over the top, you've got this solid piece of plastic. That's not empty like a reflector and lights bounce around with inside and then it, it emerges as you dictate um, as a, depending on the surface. Um, I mean, this one is like a, is faceted like a bug's eye. You could you could probably call it if I can get it to focus. There you go. So it saves space. It's great for close up, and the light is totally internally reflected, which is why it gets the name TIR, and they call it a TIR lens rather than, than a reflector because it's uh, reflecting inside rather than a empty space. So I think the I would have preferred to have seen a TIR in this. You could have made that. A little bit shorter but it doesn't matter it's still a very short light and who might have complained look it's nearly as small as the uh, Claris mini one which is very small anyway I mean even if you come compare that to something like the lumen top yes I understand that the capacity that is much better than that yes but just for a moment looking at size if size was your predominant factor in choosing a flashlight for a keychain you would probably go for this even though this lumen top is a beautiful example of a keychain light I highly rate that so back to the item that I'm supposed to be talking about so let's go over some more of the specs. Um, I've told you it's a Cree with a 10180 battery, which is very small. We'll get in there and have a look. So you can take the bottom off like that. So you get a free battery in there. Here is the 10180s. Let's see if there's any little specs on that. And the little thing just fell out. So obviously they put that in in shipping to, to prevent it from being used. So they have this as an S10 lithium ion, 100 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts made in China. Isn't everything these days. Uh, there's a little spring down there. It looks quite weak, but it doesn't need to be for such a small battery And there's not a lot of pressure here nice and clean there So we'll pop that in and then now you can make this thing function and I like the ability uh, Like the Claris you could take a spare battery if you wanted um, But it is a USB rechargeable you're probably not an issue most people carry power banks these days so IPX8 Waterproof up to two meters of water, not a problem. It's got a 1.5 meter drop rating, which is pretty good. Some of them can be a bit low, like one meter. So if you are 1.5 meters from the ground and boosh, you drop it, it should retain its functionality and still work according to the manufacturer. I'm not sit gonna sit here all night throwing it off walls to see what actually happens. So like I say, I mean, yes, it's micro USB, which I'm not a big fan of. And I, and I know I keep whinging saying, please make a type C, but I'm gonna forgo my rant as you as a regular viewer you're probably sick of my rants so we'll put that back on there right so how do you make this work right it's got two main modes so unlike some of the other ones which have four modes and, and so on this is just two simple modes so first mode use the rotary action to engage the circuit and eventually when you tighten it up there that's your that's your first mode eight lumens now, 8 lumens is more than enough for close-up work, more than enough. Um, they, they rate that on their battery, if it's fully charged, 6 hours. That's damn impressive. 6 hours with a workable light like that. Fantastic. And then, obviously, I mean, I would have preferred to have three modes, maybe a one lumen mode, which doesn't destroy night vision if you're using a map and things like that. I like to keep night vision, but that's... For a keychain light, you're probably not going to be using tactical things or camping. Um, you'd probably take a standalone light for tasks like that. So, okay, eight lumens. I would have preferred to see a one lumen, but I'm not going to argue too much. Um, your next mode, if you keep tightening, if you watch the light, bang, see it pop up there? So we're now on high. That is the highest output you're going to get from this light. Now, that's pretty bright. Uh, 130 lumens which is commensurate to what you'll get on most of the others most of the other ones come in at the, exactly the same output even the tc1 by rofus which has problems but you can check my review for that um, you, the only way you're going to get higher than that is to go for something like the olight which uses a, a different emitter you're getting about 180 lumens depending on the mode that you pick so much brighter but they, they use like, like a tir type lens and then you're going to 
to get higher than, than that, you're going to have to move into the realm of much larger lights like the Nightcore Tiny or the Nightcore Tip. But I'll go through those in, in a moment. I want to stick to this just for now. So, I mean, here's something that I'm quite impressed with. One of the things I winced about on the Claris Mini one was, yes, I love the size and I, I like the workmanship. Beautiful, well done. And the fact you can change the battery and it's got a USB rechargeable behind the threaded section. It was something about 20 minutes for on maximum. Now that's not enough. And I've told the story before where I got lost geocaching once and it took me about half an hour to get through some woods back of the car. If I'd wanted to use this on maximum, it, it would have only lasted 20 minutes and I wouldn't have got back. I think that's a downsize of, of some of these things. Yes, they're small, but the runtime is poor. I mean, yes, you could argue Trail Trek, stop whinging. Why did you not just put it on a slightly lower level? Well, it's hard when you're in the middle of nowhere in the mood and it is literally pitch black. We're not talking about wandering around New York City and Chinatown. I'm on about proper uh, outdoors. Um, you need quite a bit of light around you to prevent your twisting ankles and things like that. So I would have preferred to have seen a longer run time. And on this one, they seem to have done it. So instead of 20 minutes, which you get on the Claris, on this one, they are quoting, and it seems to be about true. I mean, you're gonna get probably slightly less than that, but you'll get close to that half an hour. So much better. So. Although you don't get the one lumen mode, which I would have preferred to have seen added, you're getting a better run time, 30 minutes. I think that's damn good. So there's obviously this is obviously an efficient, well-manufactured piece. Even the rotary reaction feels lovely and tight. It reminds me of the rotary reactions you get on the jet beams. They feel well-engineered and tight, and I like that. I don't like these sloppy ones. Okay, so we've gone over most of the points. I mean, I will mention this is black, obviously. You, you can get it in blue, grey and red. Um, but I tend to go for the boring colours. I'm not into getting, you know, day glow orange things. I'm, I'm not off to a rave. But I quite like this. It's small. It's got a better run time than the Claris. Um, this is better because it's, it gives you more attachment options. I'll be honest, I really like it. And I'm glad that a subscriber suggested that I look had a look at this because without that suggestion, I probably would have looked at it and thought, ah, oh, yeah, just another keychain light, who cares? But I think they've done a good job. So let, let's compare it. So like I say, if you want to compare it to the Claris, very similar, they use the same battery, same output. Um, Claris runtime is slightly less, so I would probably say that's better. So there's just one little option. You could, if you wanted something lighter, but obviously look, look, this is, yeah, it's thinner, but it's bulkier, uh, the Nightcore tube there, but the light's willy-nilly and it comes back in your face. It's fine for around the house, but I certainly wouldn't gonna, wanna, wanna go walking with that, uh, but it is light. Um, a more traditional one at AAA is the Astrolux A01. Um, you're gonna get, uh, you get a nice tint off these, but, um, it's heavier and there's a bit of uh, pulse width modulation going on there. You may or may not see that on camera. I can see that. I can see um, rapid line movement there. Um, I may have to slow that down to show you. But other than that, it's, an, it's a decent thing, but very, very bulky. If you compare that to something like the Lumen, Lumen Top, look how bulky it is in comparison. And yet they're doing a very similar job. Obviously that has a orange pure reflector, which is one of my favorites, but at this output, it's a bit of a mute point. Um, the higher the output gets, the more important a reflector becomes. But at, at the 100 lumen range, you're not going to get a lot of light going out into the world anyway. So there's there's a cheap option, the Astrolux, if you wanted a more expensive option, but not a lot more expensive and extremely capable, in my opinion. It's got that great ribbed grip like a sex toy. Um, it's got a, yeah, the, the attachment point isn't um, massive, but it's certainly functional and it's rotary reaction as well. And it uses a beautiful TIR and I do like this one. Highly rate the Lumen Tops, I really like them. Um, beautiful TIR lens there as well. So there's another option. Another one you might want to consider is the Jet Beam. This is the Jet U, which I really like. Uh, these uh, Jet Beams, I just like the surface. It's almost like um, a ceramic. Um, the paint is, seems to be like double the thickness you get on some of the cheapy convoys and things like that. So again, it's almost, it's almost like a, a, um, a TIR in the end there. Very good light, nice tint. Um, never had any problems with the jet beams. Another option, if you if you thought, well, I want something a little bigger, but not too much bigger, um, you could go for the, I can never remember the name of this one. It's the i3T EUS by Olight, which has, a, I think it's a Luxion uh, LED emitter, which is slightly different to what you would normally get, meaning that you can pump out more lumens. So this one goes from a low 
to a high of 180 so it's it's out doing all of these but obviously look the size difference you know double the length of that do you really want a double hanging off your keychain probably not so that's getting too long uh, other verifiable keychain lights um, all very similar i would say so i'm going to look at them together is the astrolux uh, I think this is the K1, which is technically, you could you could argue it's a copy of the tip. The tip is the classic from Nightcore. It uh, has a daily mode and a normal mode, which means it turns itself off, essentially. It's got a nice clip that's reversible and is USB rechargeable. Um, the reflector works quite well. It's almost like a, a frosted type reflector with a smooth behind it. You get about 360 lumens out of this, which is nice. Attachment's nice and big. But size, look, it's getting bigger, isn't it? It's a lot bigger than this. But the battery, the battery's going to last you longer. There's more modes. Um, your other option, if you thought, well, if you think, well, that's not enough light. Look at this. You could get the Nightcore Tiny. So this is the tip here, and this is the tiny. The tiny, it, it really is tiny. Look at the size difference. It's got a bigger, a bigger aperture there for the light, which uses a TIR, which is better for up close anyway. I would argue, and it also has a USB rechargeable and it's lighter than the tip but it's lighter by virtue of the fact that this is a thinner material and i think it's plastic uh, components a lot of it i mean this feels metal on the outside but the tip has a lot of metal on the top section anyway and you get about this 380 lumens so more lumens than this but the battery's smaller than the tip so you've got to ask yourself what is it that you are after if you, are you after an all-rounder or what i mean you can go for the k1 from astralux but this is very heavy um it's got the USB rechargeable and it's got daft modes like red light and UV if you want to pretend you're in CSI and solve a murder. So there's your other options. Another another option you might want to look at is the, I mean, I always get these two mixed up. This is the Thorfire. Look, look, look how similar they are. Um, it's a Thorfire, but it, it's not putting the output of that. It's going to be about the 100 to 130 range. Um, it, it's a decent light. It's the uh, PF01S. So there's another option for you. You could go for the 8. Now, bear in mind, I would only go for this if they have fixed the battery issues because I've mentioned this a lot. But this is the Rofus TC1. Um, very small, but at this moment in time, until I hear otherwise, I can't recommend this, so I'm not going to talk about it. Um, if you want to go slightly bigger, there are a couple of other options. You could go for the, this is a larger Claris. This is the MI1C, which uses an aspherical lens, which it's kind of an, an attempt to do what TIR does. You see, there is no zones like a spot and a spill it's one big spread zone through this aspherical lens which is like a half of a cylinder sorry half of a sphere um the interesting light you can get these in the titanium i don't know if i would pay enough to get titanium i don't think i've ever had to put a flashlight through the through its paces where it needed to be titanium i'm not fighting terminators and things like that but nice decent light very interesting um, i like the aspherical lens only for up close work though um, but very interesting light there and you're going to get a better capacity and in the same vein slightly larger is the jet beam this is the jet um iimk which again is a orange peel and road reaction which is a very nice, it's got quite a nice tint on that as well, I quite like that. So there's just some of your other options that you could go for. And again, I'm not going to mention that because it's always knackered. So there's your, there's your sort of lineup. They are there. Now that doesn't encompass all of the lights that you can get. And I realise there are new lights coming out all the time. But in comparison, I would just say they are the closest. Um, so let's give this a mark. Let's get that rubbish out of the way and talk about the flashlight I'm supposed to be talking about. But I, I just like to show you examples. I'm not one of these reviewers who just sits at the desk and uses terms like super bright and fantastic. And it doesn't show you anything comparable or show you what the beam actually does. So before I go outside and show you what it does and compare it to other lights and g give you as much information as possible, I'm going to have to give this a mark. Right. Let's have a think about this. Right. USBs behind the screwed section, great. Yes, it's not Type C, which I would prefer. It's micro USB, not so good. IPX8, fantastic. It's got a nice attachment here. Um, USB rechargeable, fair enough. Um, the problem is, I wish there was a lower lumen mode, but I think for what it does, it does an exceptionally good job. And I'm quite impressed with that runtime of half an hour, um, which seems to be better than the Claris, and I'm not sure why, because they use exactly the same battery. So I'm very impressed. Well done, Mech Army. Even the, the engineering feels nice. It feels up to the, up there with an Olight and a jet beam. So marks out of 10. Let's have a think about this. For a small, capable flashlight, 
in the 130 lumen max range i'm going to give this oh, let's have a think well the only things i could think to improve it would be to add one more mode say one lumen mode um maybe just make it a bit smaller if you, somehow i don't know how you would do that um, and add type c but other than that they're nitpicking things and that's because i'm a flashaholic so for the general public it's absolutely fantastic it's certainly up there with the lumen top uh, this is the EDC one, which I really like. It's it's in that same vein where you think that's a that's something capable which I could recommend to other people. So marks out of ten. Do you know what? I'm going to give this a solid eight. It would get nine if they put uh, extra lumen mode in and Type C. But other than that, well done, Mega Army. I'm very very impressed. Well done. So eight out of ten. Enough of me waffling. Let's get outside. <laughs>